What is going on everybody and welcome back to my workshop for another review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Kisler Supreme Whisper. This is designed by a uh, maker named, uh, well I don't know if he's a knife maker, but a knife designer named Jason Breeden, uh, a non-Japanese guy who designed a Japanese inspired knife and it's all made in Russia. Right, so um, this is a very interesting knife to live with and uh, and use. So let's go over the, the basic stuff first before anything else. Uh, we got G10 handles, the whole thing's G10, milled out, nested liners, a uh, nice little uh, spring clip on the back with a kind of family crest, uh, if you will, on there. And we got D2 steel and a trailing point blade. And as I say, kind of a Japanese Tanto design. Um, so again, very highly stylistic. Uh, let's set this down on the table. We'll do a quick uh, size comparison. Uh, let's start off with the. Hey, well, let's start off with something very generic. We got the um, XM18 here. You can see it's fairly close in length. And then uh, bring out the PM2. Um, now the PM2 has a very odd uh, handle to blade shape ratio because it has a rather long handle but a very short blade. Um, either way. The uh, Whisper obviously uh, outperforms in terms of cutting uh, area or cutting length because uh, it doesn't have any uh, choils at the at the uh, blade area, much like the XM18 does. So you're making a lot more cutting length with the Whisper. All right, so let's get these knives off the table <clears throat> and let's talk about what this knife is like to kind of live with. Um, I wouldn't really classify this as a as an EDC knife. Um, I mean, you could do EDC. We can technically EDC any knife you wanted to, but in terms of like, a, for example, a gentleman's folder, and even if you want to classify as a tactical folder, I don't know if I'd really classify this as any any or either one of those. Um, and the reason being is because of the, of the highly stylistic nature of this knife, uh, the use of this in practice on daily use is a little bit challenging in certain aspects. All right, so let me just start by uh, showing off. Um, Let's see here. Let's grab an American Tanto. So this is a um, Emerson Roadhouse. So you know, you see how the Emerson Roadhouse has again a Tanto point, but it has an American Tanto where it's a very abrupt uh, 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 secondary point, if you will. Whereas the Japanese Tantos tend to be a little bit more, um, you know, subdued and you know more flowing in terms of uh, in terms of uh, having a nice. Uh, I can't even figure the word out for it. <laughs> a nice trailing point on there. And, and that's where I get to. So when you're opening boxes, for example, with a with a, um, a traditional, not traditional, with an American Tanto, you can easily just put this point down. When you angle the point into the box or whatever you're cutting and you can just pull it down, right? And you got it. Um, on, on more kind of like um, Warncliffe style blades, or reverse tantos, as some of it is known, uh, you don't really have to angle your your knife down as as um, as much, right? But because you got the the, the American tanto, you can actually ang you can actually use this point as if, if as if it was this point right here. All right. With that being said, uh, the the uh, whisper is a little different. You got this smooth flowing. Uh, curve right here, a little bit of belly, which means you can just angle it here or here or here, but at the same time you push too hard, and this whole point just goes right into your package uh, that you're trying to open. And then if you ever try to angle the actual tip of it into the box, you're gonna be like way up here, and it's very awkward to cut that way. So I find opening boxes with this, it takes a little bit of finesse, just because I don't really know. I mean, yeah, you can do it, but it's just, it's not as, not as fluid, let's put it that way. Uh, in terms of uh, penetration and stabbing into things, uh, you know, if you need to um, penetrate into like the middle of cardboard to start a cut, this is actually quite good, you know, um, and it works just as well as any other traditional Tanto out there. Uh, so that that's the part of it uh, that 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 is kind of uh, interesting and challenging on a daily basis. Food prep with this thing, very awesome. I mean, it, it's not really that thick. It is a tiny bit thick, but it's not like thick to the point where, for example, like the uh, the uh, XM18 where, you know, <clears throat> when you're trying to saw into some food um, for food prep, it's not really uh, as useful. And because this point hits the table first, it's very easy to kind of just get in there and then just saw or then cut through it. Uh, you don't really need to use the point too much. Although I will say for food prep, uh, having a reverse Tanto uh, works a lot better for food prep. Um, and of course, having a thinner knife, for example, 
like the PM2 here, although these are, I think the PM2 is ever so slightly thicker, but because of the full flat ground and the, flow, uh, the high full flat ground makes it a lot easier to do some food prep with. Going on to the handles. Now the handles are just a, your typical straight design, you know, Japanese style handle. Very comfortable to hold on to because there's nothing really poking you. I will say, however, that if you, it, under heavy, heavy load, this handle is rather slippery. And because there's no choils, there's no thumb ramps because of the, the stylistic nature of it, and also there's no jimping on the, on the uh, blade spine, your hand does slide a little bit. Uh, and even when wearing gloves, it, it doesn't really start to hold on too much. I will say that after applying the, um, uh, what's it called again, the nail polish, which is now coming off a little bit, it, it, the nail polish surprisingly added a tiny bit of grip to it. Uh, but of course, after a little bit of use, it is coming off. Um, and yeah, like, like I said, if you're really, really tightening your grip and like, like going through this, for me it's cardboard, that's what I cut the most of. Um, I do find it, my fingers slipping forward on the knife just an ever so tiny bit, because when I am cutting cardboard, uh, I don't cut down like this on the cardboard because I am standing over it. I cut down and then angle my blade slightly this way and I kind of occasionally have to do like a bit of a sawing motion to kind of get it started and then I do a push cut uh, straight through. But if I, if I find myself, if the cardboard uh, catches for some reason and I find myself pushing too hard, my hands does start slipping forward. So that's the one thing to notice about this knife. And on, on the other note too is that this knife, again, when I want to go back to my first point about this knife not being, it's highly stylistic and it's not really technically for me like a viable carry for EDC. I pulled this out uh, <laughs> in the office and yeah, they say it's, uh, they, I'm sure it looks beautiful and looks like uh, to a certain degree a nice uh, mildly looking knife. But at the same time, you have to admit that this is really, this is really not a gentleman's carry. Um, and it, it doesn't really fulfill role as a tactical carry, in my opinion, as well. This is more like an assassin's blade. <laughs> uh, let's face it. Um, now, if, especially if you didn't actually color the handles like I did, this is going to be a basic black. And uh, that's the other point I was going to get to, that if Kizzler uh, Supreme, if you are watching the video, I would love to see kind of a two-tone handle, much like the, uh, the M. Custa uh, Katana, where they have like a, uh, a bit of yellow. They have another one, which is purple, another one, which is, I believe it's uh, blue. I can't remember. Um, but they have like th at least three variations of this handle. And I really like the way that they have this like popping out like this. This is a more of a... Uh, um, I don't want to say it's traditional, um, what's it called, uh, Japanese Tanto. Uh, this does have a, a secondary point here, um, as well as like something, uh, for example, the rock said chi here. It does have a slight secondary point, but this is a more gradual uh, curve. This has no point at all. It's just a whole upswept edge, trailing point uh, style of a knife. Um, so this is a very very fluid design and i really like the style of it uh, i really like the looks of it but on a daily basis to actually use and carry it it's a little bit different um, it's not really what i was expecting not to say that it wasn't a useful knife uh, but uh, in terms of looks and everything it's highly just too stylistic let's go on to the deployment deployment is excellent by the way these thumb studs are probably like the most um <laughs> like sharpest when i first got this this was extremely sharp it actually hurt to to, to do this um and i almost thought about um kind of like uh sanding them down a little bit but at the mo after a while i was like you know there's no point in sanding them down because it, it's just where the thumb studs are located it's perfect for flicking it out at first i thought the thumb studs were the were the blade stop but it actually aids with along with the blade stop because there is a um a stop pin inside as well so i think these two kind of sandwich each other and, and keeps the blade up and it is uh you know for the most part nice and tight if i really muscle into this i will get uh some some uh, side to side absolutely no up and down play however so that is good lock up after a few uses um a few hard uses is, is going over to the 50 percent mark it was slightly less than that so it hasn't really traveled over too much um, at first, I thought this liner lock looked a little bit too thin for this blade, but you know, when you look at it, the um, the liner lock is about half the size of the blade, so I, that's very acceptable in my um, in my mind. Uh, and you can see they are nested liners, so uh, this serves to make this G10 side completely lightweight, and so you don't have like a, a thick slab of G10 and then along with a, a slab of you know uh, steel. Uh, so it does uh, serve to reduce the weight and this knife is quite light for what it is. So again, deployment is excellent with these thumb studs. Uh, you can easily get into them, uh, left or right, you know, your fingers just fall right there because they do protrude past the handle scales as you see there. And you can just flick this knife. The other thing I like is when it's closed, when you're closing the knife. On certain knives, 
when you're closing them. I'll show you with the Rekinder. When you go to close them, you see how this part angles away uh, from your fingertips. So, you know, if, you're, if you can imagine yourself closing up, I can actually just push down on this, right? With the XM18, you're either gonna have to let it gravity, but you notice how I'm reaching around now. Whereas with this one, all I gotta do is push, and it just closes because of that sharp point there. I, I really like that. I don't know if that's a, you know, what they, if they did that on purpose, but it's just very, very useful for what I have to do. Um, and I like that a lot. All right, onto the pocket clip. Pocket clip is by far the most easiest spring clip to ever uh, insert and remove out of your pockets. Uh, it is not very high tension because watch this. I can just bend this out with like very minimal force, all right? The other thing about this pocket clip that, that may deter some people is you see how the screw heads uh, or tops of the screws are popping out on top of the scales? Well, there is a milled out area and it is recessed. The screws themselves are not recessed too much and occasionally this will get caught on your uh, um, pants pocket as you're uh, either, mainly when you're clipping it onto your pocket. Aside from that, I would like to see flat head, flat, uh, yeah, flat head screws where they're more recessed in the liners where it doesn't get caught because this is a rather low carry. It's kind of nice. And, and at first I thought it'd be hard to pull out your pants pocket, but I can actually hook my finger right here and grab like this and, and it, to deploy the knife. It's very easy. At the same time, you got this nice little decorative pivot, or sorry, decorative uh, family crest pivot. Oh my God, it's too early in the morning. A uh, decorative family crest right on the pocket clip here. It much reminds me of like a, a cross section of a lemon or an orange. But other than that, it looks very nice. Um, and again, with this so wide, so easy to grab onto. And it's kind of low key in a way. Um, it's very interesting design. And overall, it's just easy to clean out. Look at that, just nothing in the way. Just blow it out with some compressed air, you know, put some water through it. And, um, you know, <clears throat> if, um, if you ever take it down, it's very easy to take down. There's really not much to this knife and it's very little parts in there. There's a uh, milled out area for a lanyard hole. No lanyard um, uh, pin though, and that's our lanyard tube, I should say, but just a nice little lanyard hole in case you want to, uh, you know, thread some, uh, like some 550 through there. I think gutted would probably be a lot better than, than non-gutted. Um, so just be aware of that. It's not the largest lanyard hole out there. Um, got a decorative pivot as well, kind of like in a um, pinwheel design. Very interesting. Uh, overall, deployment is very smooth on, on and that has uh, phosphor bronze washers in them. I have uh, 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 done some some slight bit of custom polishing on these uh, Foster, Foster Browns washers. I've, I've, I've uh, polished them up, polished the pivot area, and polished the pivot area of the blade as well. So you don't need bearings to have this happen. It is very smooth. And again, that takes me back to the point of I don't understand why Boker decided to use uh, ball bearing pivots on a knife of this caliber. Well, you can have Foster Browns washings, washers that just does exactly the same thing, very quick to deploy, very smooth. I mean, this blade just drops like that, look at that, very nice. And this thing does the same thing. Um, but at the same time, it's almost about the same feeling. So I feel that uh, um, bearing pivots uh, have been completely overused uh, over the years for pretty much almost any knife. I really attribute uh, them to uh, um, uh, flipper knives and, and I feel that like maybe, yeah, it's necessary, but you know, to be honest with you, I have a Kershaw bolt and it just runs on, uh, on, um, washers and it runs just fine. It is very fast for a flipper knife for non, non bearings. But anyways, another quick look at it with the, uh, CRKT Heho or the Hisatsu 2. I don't know how to pronounce that properly. So please forgive me. Um, again, just two different, uh, very, two very different style of, uh, Tanto points. Um, <clears throat> So uh, there you go. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, give you this parting shot. I'll bring the uh, Rockstead Chi back out here. And actually, you know what? What the heck? Let's go ahead and let's go and move these up. Bring out the rock or the um, oh boy, <laughs> the Emerson Roadhouse. Losing my mind. And the Macusta or M Custa Katana. All right, so I'll leave you this parting shot. Um, again, very interesting knife to live with. Uh, would I recommend it? Sure. Uh, I would recommend it for people who, uh, you know, don't mind a highly stylistic Japanese-inspired design. Uh, it is pretty decently put together. Uh, I did, I did, was weirded out by the Foster Bronze washer in here that doesn't quite 
fit the diameter of the pivot. It's actually a little bit larger than the diameter of the pivot. So it does slide around a little bit. Um, very interesting. I don't know what, what to deal with that. I've never taken apart a knife where the washer a doesn't, a diameter of the washer opening doesn't fit the pivot of the, of the, um, of the pivot screw. Just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, uh, other than that, um, hopefully by the time I upload this video, I would have uploaded the disassembly video of the Whisper as well. Um, so if you got any comments, uh, question or comments, please leave it below. I think it's a very beautiful knife. Uh, would I carry it on a daily basis as much? Probably not. I just prefer uh, more knives that look like this these days. Uh, this was a, a, a decent carry for every day for, for the while I had it and carrying it. And it's highly useful. It's very, very functional. Uh, the trailing point, it takes a little bit of getting used to just because uh, a drop point is actually much more useful in my daily uses. Um, this is a little bit awkward in certain cases. Other than that, the knife is perfectly fine. Lightweight, uh, large enough uh, uh, handle real estate, large enough blade real estate, and cutting edge real estate. It's going to be an all around good EDC. So again, questions, comments, please leave it below. Aside from that, take care, have a nice day, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.